Welcome to the second installment in our discussion of big data and analytical techniques. This video is the first of two on market basket analysis. In this video, we'll cover some of the mechanics of market basket analysis and talk about some approaches at a high level. Today's discussion will cover three broad topics. First, a very quick history lesson. Then we'll cover the basics of the a priori algorithm. Finally, I'll introduce some practical approaches to market basket analysis using open source tools and Oracle products. Often when people discuss market basket analysis, they cite the beer and diapers result. In this result, a retailer discovered that customers who purchased diapers in the evening were very likely to also purchase beer. The story is resonant because it points out an unexpected correlation and an opportunity for product cross promotion. What many people don't realize is that the study is not new. The best of our knowledge, the result comes from a study OSCO commissioned in the 1990s, though they purport to have never acted on the result. Ultimately, the parable proves a good entry point to big data analytics. We would like to uncover uncommon relationships in our available data to drive business value. So how do we define market basket analysis? In the case of algorithms like a priori and frequent pattern growth, we can summarize the general approach as such. For every basket sold, unpack the basket. You'll notice in our baskets we have cabbage, steak, fruit, fries, and beer. We want to consider every K-wise combination of the items. For example, Consider pairwise combinations. I have pairs of cabbage and steak, steak and fries, steak and beer, and so on. Here's the simple but powerful part of generating these combinations. We can consider the frequency of combinations to suggest meaningful business rules. In our example, I have more occurrences of beer and steak than I do of the others. Thus, there may be some value in cross promoting them. There are many algorithms that can be used to develop business rules for baskets. The two of the most prevalent are a priori and frequent pattern growth. While algorithm choice does matter, it's important to remember that developing interesting rules about product implication is really what matters here. But how do we define interesting? In the case of a priori, also called association rules. Interesting rules stem from combinations that have high support and confidence, or combinations that provide good lift. Support, confidence, and lift may not mean what you initially suspect, so it's a good idea to define them. In the context of a priori, support is the number of times this rule occurred over the total number of baskets or transactions. For example, if steak and beer appeared as a pair in three out of five baskets, our support would be three over five. Confidence is the support for a rule over support for the antecedent. That is, how often did the pair occur and how often over how often the first item in the pair occurred. If steak and beer occurred three times, while well, steak occurred four times, we can say confidence is three over four. For those that are interested in the formal definitions of support and confidence, they're stated here. Spelled out, they say that the support of X with Y and Y is observations of the intersection of X and Y over the total set size. Confidence is the observations of the intersections of X and Y over the observations of X. Confidence allows us to compute lift, another measure of interestingness. Put simply, Lift allows us to evaluate the performance of any given rule versus others we might find in the same set of baskets. Lift is defined as the confidence of a rule over the probability of the outcome. In our example, steak and beer had a confidence of three over four. If beer were to occur in four out of five transactions, we can say that lift is three over four divided by four over five. In the second part of this discussion, we will look at treating customer baskets stored as XML in HDFS. Baskets will have customer information, time of purchase, and a field containing the whole of their shopping cart. Given this example data, what is it we want from the basket? 
What we want to achieve is akin to a combinatorial expansion. That is, if the basket is an array, we don't want to simply explode it and produce a flat table of single items. Instead, we want to take each k-wise combination from the basket and produce a row for it. You can imagine a naive form of this using nested for loops on an array or a recursive function which produces the k-wise groups necessary. While the next segment will cover some approaches in detail, let's discuss some ways we could perform this analysis. If we use just Hive to produce our data, we would require a UDTF and coordinating code to expand baskets and keep track of counts for computing support, confidence, and lift. The Hoot provides a frequent pattern growth function which is geared towards market basket analysis. However, it requires transforming our data into the Hoot's vector format. Both R and Oracle Data Miner have packages for the a priori algorithm. The former in the form of its A rules and A rules sequence packages, the latter in its drag and drop association rules widget. In both cases, however, a transaction table is required rather than an ordered basket. In the next segment, we'll cover the writing of a UDTF for XML baskets, which will provide us pairwise combinations for building rules. We'll also use Oracle Loader for Hadoop and Hive's explode function to produce a transaction table. Finally, we'll use Oracle Data Miner to illustrate how market basket analysis can be done quickly in a simple workflow. In the next segment, we'll cover how to write a pairwise UDTF to generate table functions in Hive. You'll see here we have some of the code that we'll go over. All we're doing is splitting a string into an array and looping through the members in a nested for loop. Once we've built a jar containing this UDTF, we can access it via Hive. Here I'm accessing it using hue, pointing out the path to the jar and assigning a temporary function name. At that point, the exploded basket is available via a lateral view. We execute this. We'll notice that the Hive optimizer adds in our UDTF here. The lateral view is necessary to blend the base table, or join the base table, to our new exploded subtable. Once the job is complete, you can see all of the possible pairs in our, market ba in, our, in our shopping baskets and their counts. Well, this is an efficient way to generate pairwise combinations, or in fact, k-wise combinations. We can generate market basket rules or association rules much quicker in Oracle SQL Developer and Oracle Data Miner. Notice here, I have a table containing our market basket transactions. This is in fact a transaction table containing the time of the transaction, the customer who purchased it, and each of the items purchased during that transaction. In a simple drag and drop workflow, we can connect those, those transactions to the market basket analysis widget in Oracle Data Miner. Once the workflow has been run, we can view the model output. We notice that rules are rated by lift, confidence, and support, just as we discussed. And for any given rule, we can see it expressed as a simple if-then statement. 
This covers simple X implies Y rules, as well as rules on pairs.